Daniel and the Lions. Once there was a man named Di Daniel. Um, man, um, God's people did not like, um, Daniel. Um, they were jealous. Then the man go into a pit full of hungry lions. Um, he for all night. The lion, I, um, Daniel, but I'm praying to God. Next day, Daniel came out of the pit. The lions had not eaten yet. Because he had faith in God as Satan. Hi, South Shores. I'm going to be reading Colossians 3, 12 through 16. Since God chose you to be the holy people he loves, you must close yourselves with tender-hearted mercy, kindness, humility, gentleness, and patience. Make allowance for each other's faults and forgive anyone who offends you. Remember, the Lord forgave you, so you must forgive others. Above all, close yourselves with love, which binds us all together in perfect harmony. And let this peace that comes from Christ rule in your hearts, for as members of, of one body you are called to live in peace and always be thankful. Hey there South Shores kids and family and welcome back to Kids Church. We're excited to spend yet another morning with you. Parents, this announcement is for you. Friday, February 19th at 6.30 p.m. Here at the Data Point campus, we'll be hosting a family financial planning seminar. Come and learn on ways that you can plan for a better future for you and your kids. Childcare will be provided, so make sure to come hang out with us. All right, guys, once again, I can't find Mr. Brian. Will you help me look for him? Oh, man, here we go again. There's no way she's going to find me today. I'm like invisible. I'm like the invisible man. I, she ought to just give up. I mean... It's just, it's not happening, Miss Katie. Yeah, you keep looking. Keep on walking. Because you ain't finding Brian. That's it. Take the stairs. Did you have any idea I was up here? I bet you didn't. I had everybody fooled on this one. Hey, you know what time it is? It's time for everybody to stand up and let's get ready to sing! There's a spirit I cannot contain There's a spirit I cannot contain The same power that raised Jesus up from the grave The same spirit I cannot contain
No way that's happening. No way! Brian? What? What are you doing? I'm trying to throw beanbags into the trash can. It looked like a kind of fun game. 
Yeah, well, you realize you're oh, on your... You're on your phone the whole time and you're distracted. You're not really paying attention to what you're trying to do. Oh. Yeah. You know, if you're paying attention, you might have a little better luck. Put down? Yeah. Focus? Yeah. <laughs> hey guys, watch this and pay special attention to Peter and what happens to him when he gets distracted. Jesus had been teaching crowds of people by the Sea of Galilee. It was getting late, so he told his disciples to get into the boat and go to the other side of the sea. Jesus sent the crowds away and went up on the mountain to pray by himself. That evening, the boat was far from the shore. The wind blew and the waves tossed the boat around. Jesus was still on the mountain alone. Around three in the morning, Jesus came toward his disciples walking on the sea. When the disciples saw Jesus, they were terrified. It's a ghost, they cried. Right away, Jesus spoke to them. Have courage, it's me, do not be afraid. Peter answered, Lord, if it really is you, tell me to come to you on the water. So Jesus said, come. Peter got out of the boat and started walking on the water toward Jesus. But when Peter saw how strongly the wind was blowing, he was afraid. Peter began to sink. Lord, save me, he cried. Jesus reached out his hand and grabbed Peter. Jesus said, you have little faith. Why do you doubt? They got into the boat and the wind stopped. Then everyone in the boat worshiped Jesus and said, truly, you are the son of God. Jesus proved that he can be trusted. His miracles, teaching, death, and resurrection show that he is who he says he is. Only Jesus can save us when we look to him in faith. In our Bible story today, we learned about Jesus walking on water. This story taught us two things about Christ. The first is that Jesus can be trusted. Jesus is who he says he is. From his miracles to his death to his resurrection, Jesus is who he promised to be when he came to earth. The second is what happened to Peter when he lost focus on Christ. Peter fell in the water. That can happen to us in our own lives too. Sometimes we lose sight of Jesus and all the things that he has done for us. When we remain focused on him, while bad things still might happen to us, we have true trust and reliance in God, who is always with us. All right, friends, now it's time for questions from kids. Good morning, kids. This weekend's question is from the Gospel Project, and it is, how can I have a stronger faith? How can we have a stronger faith? Great question. You know, I'd like to think of faith as like a muscle. It's something that you need to, you need to work out, you need to stretch. We'll talk about that more in a second. But number one, what I'd like you to do is read God's Word. God's got this, this book, it's called the Bible. It's a love letter to each one of us and it will help you grow your faith by reading his word. Number two, pray. You can simply just ask God, Lord, help me with my faith. Help me have a stronger faith. And number three, worship, coming together weekly with your church, singing to God, learning more about him. These things are very, very important. So back to what I was saying about strengthening our faith. Like I said, I think of it like a muscle. So if, let's just take uh, this canopy here, for example. If you wanted to stretch your muscles, you get your canopy and you, you kind of do some curls. You kind of get some working out going on. Now, is that the most comfortable thing in the world? No, actually kind of hurt, that thing's heavy. But if you keep it up, your muscles are gonna grow and they're gonna get bigger. So that's what we have to do. We have to try to stretch our faith. And what do I mean by that? Sometimes we've got to put ourselves in those uncomfortable situations. Maybe you've got to go sit next to that person in the cafeteria that you don't really know, and you want to be kind to them. Look for opportunities to share your faith. But by getting in those situations, getting a little bit uncomfortable, maybe getting our hands a little bit dirty, that will allow you to stretch that faith and ultimately grow it. And that's the idea. Have a great day, kids. I will listen to what God the Lord says. He promises peace to his people, his faithful servants, Psalm 85, 8.
That's a wrap for another Great Kids Church. We'll see you all next week. Bye.